Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Climate, a webcast series from Eco America. My name is Brett Matulis, director of the Path to Positive program, and today we're going to be talking with climate leaders from two organizations that were finalists in this year's American Climate Leadership Awards, Hannah Barg from the Wild Center in Tupper Lake, New York, and Tom Lloyd from Climate Generation. Hannah, Tom, welcome. Thank Thanks, you. Brett. As many of our listeners already know, the American Climate Leadership Awards are prestigious annual prizes that recognize frontline leaders working to address our climate challenges. The awards give away $175,000 and honor those communities that are achieving real success in climate action. Our guests today are from organizations that were finalists, among the 10 finalists from this year's awards. They've joined us to tell us a little bit about the incredible work they've been doing and to also offer some advice to leaders elsewhere that might be interested in replicating their success. Hannah, I'd like to start with you. The Wild Center has been organizing the Youth Climate Summit for a number of years. Can you tell us about this and what it's achieved? Sure, yeah. Um, hello, I'm Hannah. I'm the Youth Climate Program Manager at the Wild Center. And um, we had our first Youth Climate Summit at the museum in 2009. Um, youth Climate Summits are kind of like a conference style event for high school students to come and learn about climate science, justice, and solutions. And um, today, um, in our current sort of Adirondack Youth Climate Summit, we have over 200 high school students, teachers, community members, and speakers gather in November for our summit. Um, it's a really exciting time. I would say one of the most uh, impactful parts of the summit experience is really this chance for young people to network with other young people and to see that they're not alone in their interest and passion for climate change, that they um, have a whole network of other young people in their communities and in their region who are really excited about climate change and want to take action together. And um, this model has been sort of replicated in many different contexts. Um, there are youth climate summits that happen at museums like ours, also at nature centers and schools in outdoor settings um, through being planned with local governments. There's lots of different models um, and they've been scaled up to be with, uh, with undergraduate students and also scaled down to middle school. And now um, sort of emergent summits are in elementary schools. And so we're really excited that this model is being spread. We've had over 160 youth climate summits in nine countries and 23 states that have used our model. Um, and yeah, we're just, we're excited that other people want to host these events. And I think it's a really great catalyst for young people to learn um, more about climate change and to, to really be able to network with other young people. That's so great. I had heard about the Youth Climate Summit a number of years ago, and it's, you know, it's great to finally make this connection and get to talk to you. So, Tom, you're a youth organizer with Climate Generation. Can you tell us about the work that you've been doing around climate justice education? Yeah. So uh, just to piggyback off of Hannah's point, I love how you guys also do youth climate summits because we actually did a youth climate summit, too. And it, it's always so empowering to see the change that, that like one day can bring on and the enthusiasm that being able to interact with peers who are also like really interested in climate change and also experts in the field can really change someone's outlook on climate change and give people a ton of enthusiasm. And I think that in my work for uh, including youth in climate change education, we always try to underscore the enthusiasm, right? Because in the, our world, there's a lot of climate anxiety, eco-anxiety, and by creating climate education, we try to bring hope and we try to bring solutions. And part of the solutions that we're working on is Climate Generation has been working on a climate justice education bill, which is aiming to include climate justice education in Minnesota curriculum across uh, the state. So climate justice, as you know, is uh, basically the idea of how different marginalized groups are going to be disproportionately facing the brunt of the climate crisis. And by teaching kids about this and how different groups are gonna experience climate change in different ways, we're really giving them the tools to start addressing the issues that we're gonna face the most in our society. Yeah, that's great, that's so important. 
So Hannah, the work that you've been doing, obviously it's been a, a real success. What advice would you give to other climate leaders who work with young people? And, and what would you tell somebody in the climate movement that isn't yet working with youth? Yeah, um, I would say for me, one of the most important things I've learned about working with young people is um, it's important to listen to them and listen to their concerns, their feelings, their ideas, their thoughts, um, and like actually really listen. I think um, sometimes as adults, we, we like to pretend like we're listening, but then we have our own agendas and our own um, plans. And we're really just trying to like fit young people into like a pre- um, existing mold or, or decision-making process or plan that we, we have. And um, I want to challenge adults in the climate space to really um, bring youth on as partners, um, build relationships with them, and trust them that they um, have the, the skills and the interest and the passion to lead um, and that we can follow their lead. Um, I, I think if you're an adult and you're in the climate space and you're not working with young people, you should be. Um, I think young people are driving the climate movement. Um, you, we've seen a really big change in the climate movement because of young people's leadership. Um, the climate movement has become more intersectional, more focused on social justice issues, um, and um, more focused on mental health because of young people's leadership. And so I think it's really important for adults to um, deeply understand the concerns of young people. And to do that, we really need to be in partnership with them. Um, and one of the ways we do that through the Youth Climate Summits is having young people help lead the planning of the summits. Um, and I think that's a really important part of our um, process because we want these events to be relevant to young people. We want them to be fun and engaging. And we can't do that if we don't have young people involved in helping make those decisions and create the agenda and um, promote the event. Uh, they know the best methods to do that. Um, they understand their generation the best because they're in it. Um, and so I just want to really encourage intergenerational partnerships for um, climate action. I think that's really important. And to not put all the pressure on young people to do all the work either. Like I think we have this tendency as adults to say, wow, young people are so inspiring. They're the future. Um, they're going to, uh, to change the world. And while I believe that's true, I, I also think that that is a way that adults absolve themselves of responsibility um, to take climate action themselves. And we really need the, everyone on board. Um, and we, we need everyone who's alive today to be taking climate action together. Um, and so I really wanna encourage adults to partner with young people and older folks and create an intergenerational climate movement. That's the vision I have for the future and um, the work that I wanna be doing. Absolutely. That's such a great response. And I, I love the, you know, starting with listening first, it seems so obvious, but, uh, you know, you, listening to, to young people. I myself am a former educator and I, you know, I always got a lot of inspiration and sort of, you know, was just always energized by uh, the young people that I was working with. So, Tom, you started your work as a student calling for climate mm -hmm. education. Can you reflect on the importance of student voices and advocating for their own education? Yeah, I think we've all been in those conversations where uh, we've had climate conversations, but youth just weren't involved. I think youth are such a necessary component because right? We're going to be the ones who face the brunt of the climate crisis. In 50 years, our legislators are, I have to say it, like not going to be here anymore. And they're not going to have to feel the face of like climate catastrophe. So having youth involved lays the groundwork for our generation to improve our society. And especially with climate education, we give people the resources to learn about and become inspired about the work that's being done. I think that a lot of students right now, unfortunately, are not being given a lot of resources and there's a ton of interest, which is really unfortunate. So through our work at Climate Generation, we're trying to provide information to teachers to help include uh, uh, climate change education in their curriculum and become more uh, skilled at how to teach that. And we're also trying to include that in the statewide curriculum, making sure that students have the resources and access to this education. That can be really empowering. Yeah, that's so great. I, I think, 
you know, for educators out there, the, the ability to, to listen to your, your students and respond to what they're asking for to be taught about and, and you know, just incorporating them into your, uh, your teaching uh, is, is definitely the way to go. So, so Hannah, you know, we're talking about organizations providing, uh, you know, opportunities for youth to lead and uh, also talking about the educational sector. But what about in the household? What can parents do to encourage their children to become climate leaders? Yeah, I love this question. This was actually kind of challenging for me because I don't work with parents directly all the time. Um, but it was a good um, it was it was good for me to think a little bit more about this and how parents are are indirectly involved in in the work that we're doing with young people. And I would say one of the pieces of advice I have is um, start younger. I think that we have this idea that like climate change is this really big complex issue and that young people, especially like elementary age or even before elementary, like can't understand climate change, but they're hearing about climate change and they're seeing climate change young ages. And so we need to be having those conversations younger. And I think like the work I do really focuses on high school um, age youth, but students decide what they want to do for their like careers in seventh grade. And so I think like it's almost too late to like get started in high school. Um, we really need to be like um, building this into our out of school time conversations in the household. And I would say like one of the most powerful things that parents can do to like inspire climate leadership and their kids is to take action with them. I think um, like obviously having those conversations and asking your um, children about like what they're feeling and um, what they're hearing about climate change and being able to answer some of their questions. You don't have to be a climate expert to do that. And I think one of the most inspiring things you can do with your, your kids to help them feel more hopeful and um, like they, they can be a part of the solution is to actually take action together, whether that's in your own home, maybe you want to start a composting program in, in your school, but you could start at your house um, and, and doing that with your family members. Um, maybe it's involving your neighbors in um, doing a litter cleanup or planting trees. Um, and, it, and it could be something like uh, even more educational, like maybe you want to um, start like a family group where you can talk about climate change together um, and, and have those conversations and look at resources and find ways that you can be more effective um, in, in talking about climate change as a family unit. I think that's really important. So I would just say, don't be afraid to start younger. I think um, that's a really important and, and it's not being done enough. We don't talk about climate change enough. Um, and so let's normalize that. Let's make that a family um, conversation that we have at the dinner table or um, that we have on going on a walk together or something like that. Absolutely. So obviously climate change is such a big problem. Tom, what would you say to somebody who feels like they can't make a difference on climate change? I also love this question because I, like myself, have definitely felt like, oh my God, climate change, it's a huge issue, right? And like sometimes when you get overwhelmed by the enormity of the task, you lose sight of like the meaning of your own actions. And my grandma used to tell me the story about an astronomer who was like a world-class astronomer and loved looking at the stars and researching. But one day he stepped in a puddle. And then it's a really interesting story because my grandma used to say, it's really all about not neglecting the small things when thinking about the great things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the small tasks matter so much. And although we can often lose sight of it, we need to be mindful of like what we're doing is really important. And whether it be a litter cleanup, whether it be a recycling day or just something small, we have a really big impact. And just talking about climate change is really powerful too. Bringing it to the forefront of a conversation can bring it into the forefront of other people's minds. And that creates a cyclical effect, a snowballing effect in our society, right? So anything that's small, anything in general that relates to climate change, do it. Like there's nothing to lose. 
don't stress yourself out. We're all trying to do our best and we recognize that. So just do anything that you can and recognize and celebrate, celebrate the actions that you have done and celebrate what you want to do in the future too, no matter how small or big. Yeah, I love that you um, that you brought up that like every action makes a difference. I think um, sometimes we can get like bogged down and we're not like creating enough change, kind of like what you are saying. But um, like those individual actions aren't just individual, right? People see us do yeah. those things. We talk about the like us. We talk about um, like performing that action with other people, and so it really does have this ripple effect, even if it is a small action to start. I love the metaphor that you used as well, Tom, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of, and, and the fact that it came from your grandmother, you know, it drives home this yeah. kind of intergenerational wisdom of, of that. I, I really love that. So, okay. Coming to the final questions now, I just want to, you know, ask if there are any opportunities, Hannah, of, you know, uh, initiatives for people to get involved, uh, anything that you'd like to highlight? Yeah. So, um, Obviously, we would love to support more youth climate summits happening. Um, If there's not one in your community already, um, we have a whole toolkit that we've designed to help replicate our model. Um, You can download that on our website. We also have a network of youth climate summit coordinators that meet monthly. And so people who are coordinating summits can come together and talk to each other about challenges and issues, um, things that they've tried that have worked well, and kind of talk about the process of planning a summit with other summit coordinators who are doing it in real time. Um, And then we also have uh, some like training, summer training opportunities. We have an educator retreat that happens in July every year. And then we have a um, youth climate leadership retreat that happens at the end of July or beginning of August every year. So definitely encourage you to to check out those opportunities. um, And we would love to partner with you to start a youth climate summit in your community. That's great. And Tom, similar question for you. I'd, I'd also like to know, you know, what's next for you and how you plan to stay involved in the climate movement and, and you know, what your hopes are for the future. Yeah. So uh, climate generation right now has a lot of different initiatives. So we have teacher education that's always available for teachers if they want to learn more about how to teach uh, around climate change and how to approach that topic subject. And we also are working on different initiatives, including uh, legislative initiatives, uh, such as the uh, climate justice education bill that we're working to get passed in the Minnesota uh, legislator. And we are also planning a summer convergence, which is really similar to the Youth Climate Justice Summit. And it's just meant for Minnesota youth and Uh, youth in the greater Midwest to come up and converge about climate justice and talk about it and really share our experiences and network a little bit. That's great. Well, thank you both so much for your time. I really appreciate this conversation and, and hearing about all the initiatives that you're working on. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to engage with us using the hashtag Let's Talk Climate and subscribe and follow for the latest news and updates. From all of us at Eco America and Path to Positive, thank you. Bye for now and see you soon for another episode of Let's Talk Climate.